welcome to my god are we saying day 10 welcome to day 10 of the fast our glorious glorious fast what a way to end this fast my god today's scripture is we're looking at first corinthians 7 1 Corinthians 7, that's our scripture for today. And my title is Marriage Q&A. Marriage Q&A. Studying the scripture, you see that Apostle Paul, he was responding to a series of questions that were asked about marriage. This chapter is very large, so I'm not going to go through all the questions, but I pick a few answers from the question for us to highlight. Okay, so highlight number one. This is one, um, this is one answer that he gave about marriage. He says, it is good to abstain from sexual relationship if you are not married. I'm going to repeat this number one again. It is good. Abstain from sexual relationship if you are not married. There should be no touching. There should not be any touching. No sampling. This is the word. This is not Mama Scott. This is the word. It's number two. However, if you do not, if you do not have to remain, however, you do not have to remain this way. So he's not telling you just to abstain and just stay abstinent. He said, you do not have to remain this way. If it's too hard for you to control your feelings, it is okay to get married. It is because marriage is good. It's okay to, to, to do it, but married and do it right amen let the church say amen okay number three this is another question he's responding to it says a man should have his own wife and a woman her own husband own is in uppercase own is highlighted there should not be any sharing with husbands or wives, meaning sharing partners. No, people in the world does that, but in the kingdom, no, we don't share our husband. We don't share our wives. It is a command from the word. The husband must fulfill his marital duties to his wife. He said with goodwill, and with kindness, it's not only the husband. So don't just say, oh, my husband should do this. Buy me this and buy me that and be kind to me. Yes, he should. But he also said, and the wife must do the same thing to her husband. So what is he saying? Don't just look for the husband to always buy you gift be kind to you it is your duty as well it is your responsibility to be kind to your husband to give him good gifts if he's not giving you be the first one to start that's what mama teaches us be the first one to start start it okay this is a big one this number Number five, let's hope I'm counting correct. Despite your body belongs to you, you do not have authority over it. I'm speaking especially to the females. Despite your body belongs to you, you do not have authority over it. We can know that he's responding to a question. Who has authority over this body? He said, no, this fight is yours. You don't have authority over it. The husband, number six, the husband has authority over the wife's body. And the wife has authority over her husband's body. Her husband, her 
own husband, not somebody else's husband, her own husband's body. Number seven, um, answer. A wife should not leave her husband or the husband should not leave the wife. I know there can be some, husband and wife can go through challenges. We know all of that, but the baseline, they should not leave each other. If there's a situation that's going on, seek counseling, seek godly advice, but it's not in daddy's interest for you to just get up and, and leave your husband and leave your wife for a challenge. Seek godly counsel. Speak to your spiritual authority concerning any problem that you're having, but don't just take a drastic decision and say, oh, I'm divorcing because of one little tiny thing. Most of the, most of the challenges, it just take advice. It wants wisdom. So seek godly counsel. Amen. <laughs> this is the big one now, the main focus of this fast. Number eight, despite the fact that you are fasting, you should continue to satisfy each other's sexual desire. The Bible say it. So fasting should not stop you from satisfying your partner, meaning your husband or your wife. Yes, that's what he said. And I'm going to give you the scriptural references for that. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 5. It says, do not deny yourselves. This one I'm reading from the Good News Translation. I'll be doing two translations um, for this verse. It says, do not deny yourselves to each other unless you first agree to do so for a while in order to spend your time in prayer and fasting. But then resume normal marital relation. In this way, you will be kept from giving into Satan's temptation because of your lack of self-control. Now, we're, I'm going to read the NLT. It says, do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree. Now let's put a pause right here at agree. Do not deprive each other of sexual desire unless you both agree. So both husband and wife should have the, the chance, the ability to still enjoy their sexual desire during fasting. Unless both of you agree and say, it. you know, during this time, um, I, I need this time away just to spend some time with daddy. But you can just go ahead on your own and say, oh, I'm fasting. I won't be coming in the bedroom tonight. I am going to spend some time in the guest bedroom. No, both party has to agree both the husband and the wife have to agree and say, okay, I agree. I, I release you. I give you this five days to spend some time during your prayer and fasting. Otherwise, it's a no. Okay. So let's continue. You, you both say you have to agree to, to take the, to refrain from intimacy. If you look at it, it says, the reason for this, he shows you everything in the Bible is for a reason. And daddy have his strong backing. Why, whenever he give us instruction, he have strong reason why he tell us not to. He says the reason why you should not do it so that Satan cannot tempt you. Because you know the devil he likes to talk. The devil is like to talk, especially when you're doing things on your own own when you're not in alignment and when i say not in alignment in this case i mean 
if you are fasting, your husband is fasting, or say one person is fasting, but then you go by yourself and decide upon your own self. And you said, I am taking five days by myself. Then you know what the enemy going to do? Because you know what? You, you're not in alignment with the word. You're doing your own thing. You're fasting your own way. So he likes that. So he's going to go whisper to the other person, whether to the husband or to the wife and tell lies. And that he know when the other person buy into that lies, it can cause a problem. I'm not even going to go into the problems, but we know. So that's the reason why he say, if you're fasting, you could still do it. It's not a problem. But if you don't want to do it, you have to agree. Come in agreement first and say in this fast, either we're going to do it or we're not going to do it. And when both parties agree, then everything will go smooth. The enemy don't have any anything in there because what? You and your partner is coming in alignment with the word. That's what the word say. So everything that daddy say in the in his word, it is for our good. When we do the word, we come in alignment with the word. We come in alignment with God. The devil can never come in alignment with the word. Uh-uh. He likes to do things outside of the word to get people in trouble. But when you stay in the word, you stay with the word, things will work out for your marriage. People like to say marriage is hard. Marriage is not hard. It's just to know the principles for marriage and applying it. Okay? So, I don't have a lot to say, so I'm not even going to stretch it. I know you all get the point of what I'm saying. So, we see in conclusion from this entire chapter, though I did not answer all the questions, in conclusion for chapter 7, First, you see marriage is a choice. Marriage is a decision. You don't have to marry if you don't want to. It's not for everyone. If you read it, pick what you want. You can either be married or not be married. I said you have the right to choose whether you want to be married or not. However, if you choose to get married, there are certain stipulations that you must follow for your marriage to work. It shows you don't be doing your own thing on your own. The scripture is right when he said you are no longer two people, but no, you are one. So if you're one, you can make just go ahead and make decision like that. The one mean both of you coming together to make one, make one decision. That's oneness. So I said, despite the fact that you are fasting, you must continue to satisfy each other's desire because there is an enemy out there and he's waiting to use any opportunity, any, any opportunity that he can get to try to come between you and your spouse. But as you do the word, I said, you close the door to the enemy. As you fast and pray the way daddy recommended for husband and wife, you will see the benefit. You will close the door to the enemy. What I like with this father, this God, this kingdom, there's nothing hidden. He don't leave you to figure out anything. He says, this is what you need to do because this. Or he will say, do this and I will do this. There's nothing in. There's no hidden agenda in the kingdom. Everything is open and every instruction that he give is for a benefit. We see it clearly. When you fast, when you pray and you fast, and you do it according to the stipulations 
come in agreement with your partner, whether you're doing it while, while throughout this fast or you are not doing it. Either way, both of you agree and you continue your fast and you will see the result in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. That he asks you, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to fast correctly, not to fast with our own selfish ways, but to fast according to your stipulations, according to the way you show us in the scripture. Father, I ask you, Lord, for the grace for everyone to follow this pattern and to fast correctly as a married couple in the name of Jesus. Father, I also thank you, Lord, for showing us that marriage is not for everyone. So no one has to feel bound. Oh, I have to be married. Marriage is a choice. And if you choose to be married, make sure you choose to follow the stipulation, follow the guideline, follow the principles. I thank you again, my father. In Jesus' name, amen. 